Hi and welcome. In this video, I will give an overview of digital forensic and all the steps involved in it. I will also discuss certain terminologies which are often confused once we talk about digital forensic. Once a crime is committed where the tool or the target is an information system, then digital forensic is carried out to investigate this information system or device in order to find out digital evidences to attribute this criminal activity to a subject. Sound legal procedures are followed in digital forensic to ensure that once the criminal is at, uh, prosecuted in court based upon gathered evidences, then these evidences does, uh, do not get rejected by the court based upon their legal value. Now these are the steps uh, in digital forensic that is first of all we will identify potential information system or devices then we acquire evidences uh, or the images from these devices then we analyze these acquired images of information system or devices and at the end we submit a report of our finding to senior management or client. A forensic expert may be called upon by the court to testify about uh, his gathered findings or evidences. Now in identification phase we actually look for physical digital objects or information system uh, which we think contain potential evidences. Then this acquisition phase is very important and in this acquisition phase we acquire images from these information system or devices. So the main focus in this phase is the preservation of integrity or unauthorized modification to the evidences or uh, the gathered image. And we maintain a chain of custody which gives a guarantee to the court that the evidence is not handled in an authorized way since the time it was captured to the time uh, it was submitted to the court. The old approach to acquire an image from an information system or device was to cut the power. But now the anti-forensics technique used by the hacker forces us to capture the life state of the system including the running processes and the network connections. Now this meta exploitable is an exploitation framework which is available in Kali Linux. And it is used to develop exploit and to distribute exploit to the target system. Now this meta exploit actually follows a modularization uh, that actually separate the payload development by the hacker uh, from its distribution to the target system. So you can independently develop a payload and afterward you can distribute it to the target. Now this metapredator is a payload uh, which is developed in Kali Linux using this metasploitable framework. And once this payload or malware has, uh, is developed by the hacker, then hacker uh, distribute it or deliver it to the target system and once it is delivered and executed in the target system it runs in the memory so it basically performs many functions for example it can dump hashes from the memory of the target system and these hashes are the password hashes afterward uh, dumping or gathering the password hashes from the target system to hacker computer you can crack these hashes offline. It also can establish command and control connection from hacker to the target system. And it can upload or download files from or to the target system. And it can also log the keystrokes entered by the user of the victim system. And it can capture screenshots of the victim system and it can also disable the security products for example firewall and 
antivirus and it can also modify registries entries and uh, i have already told that uh, it runs in memory so because it runs in memory so it necessitate the collection of live data or volatile data which get lost once you shut down your system so before shutting down system which was the old approach you have to gather the image of the memory so not only you gather the image of the memory you gather the image of the hard drive after shutting it down and maybe any other information device for example usbs or other media cds dvds phones or mp3 players so basically you create two copies of the image and this image is basically a bit by bit copy that you acquire each and every bit of the storage media and this bit includes the allocated space which are you which is used by the operating system and the unallocated uh, space which is not used by the operating system or which is free or may uh, contain old data now this slack space and these bad sectors actually uh, can be used by the hacker to hide uh, his data so this slack space actually is a space basically once a space is allocated to the file it is allocated based upon the cluster so cluster is the uh, minimum unit which can be allocated to a file so if for example if you allocate four cluster to a file and file uses 3.5 collect uh, three and a half cluster then half cluster is left uh, without any uh, data or usage so hacker can hide his data in this cluster space now these bad sectors actually are the sector which a hacker can intentionally declare bad so that he can hide data and these bad sectors are then not read by the operating system so once you carry out this backup which is a similar concept this backup actually only back uh, creates a copy of the allocated space and this bit by uh, bit image is more comprehensive now these are the tools which you can uh, use to gather uh, the um, acquire the image from a uh, information system and then you create a hash of the system and hash is a unique value and if you change a bit in the image then this hash value gets changed and actually hash value is a control to detect any unauthorized modification in evidence or in the image of the information system so if the hash of the copy and had the hash of the uh, original media is same it means that the evidence uh, was not tampered now in the next step that is the analysis actually you work on the copy of the uh, bit by bit uh, image or the copy of the storage media and you do not use uh, the actual media for an analysis purpose and this media is kept in a uh, secure location and actually the objective is to find artifacts attributing uh, this criminal activity or instance uh, to any subject then you submit a report of your finding and this report contain an executive summary for uh, for senior management and uh, it also contain the technical details for any security guys if uh, this report recommends uh, some improvement in the current security controls and these security guys uh, need to know these details in order to implement or improve security controls now this step is optional that is the testimony that you can be called uh, by the court to uh, testify as an expert witness uh, regarding your findings now these are the related co concept that the incident response now in in, uh, in digital forensics the focus is on uh, the 
uh, investigation of the evidence and to find out evidences and then to follow the entire legal process during this activity and in incident response the focus is on the operationalization of information system that is the availability of services so basically uh, you focus on early detection and then containment of any attack and then recovery of your controls or the information system so that services can be provided to your clients but in digital forensic, this is not the focus because uh, sometimes at, as a part of incident response, you carry out digital forensic. That if you detect any malicious artifact, then you deposit it to the forensic guy in order to find out what happened. And uh, in the same time, you carry out your routine operations. Now, this network forensic is related to data in motion and there are uh, certain uh, legal issue because uh, sometimes uh, some information system do not contain any hard drive evidences and you have to see the network connection in order to find out a, a sign of any malicious activity so maybe it is an email server or maybe uh, instance message or web uh, activity or maybe file is being transferred over the network or maybe you have to see the protocol data unit uh, of payload that is the data are the lower uh, layers in OSI model so payload is uh, delivered to the operating system but there are certain necessary information which are contained in the lower layers of protocol data unit of that payload and network forensics allow you to, uh, to find out the evidences from PDU. Then you may, may need to reconstruct the entire uh, transaction of malicious activity. And maybe uh, the system forensic or the digital forensics uh, you carry out on a single evidence or maybe on a, a multiple evidence but there is no correlation. And this network forensics gives, allows you to correlate different uh, events happening in the entire enterprise in order to construct the entire uh, chain of malicious activity. Now this network forensic, uh, uh, rather this inter network internet detection is against uh, the focus is on uh, the operations of uh, uh, information system and basically you detect uh, the intrusion. Now this software forensic or application forensic is the, or malware forensic uh, this is the forensic of malicious artifact uh, you find out in your system. So basically you carry out uh, reverse engineering of these artifacts in order to find out what they are doing on your system or what kind of malicious activities or what all thing they have compromised on your information system. So this uh, malware forensic or software forensic uh, is static and dynamic in static you do not run the code and in dynamic you run, basically run this malware in a vm environment or maybe using the debugger so this uh, vm environment then monitors the behavior of this malware in order to uh, check its malicious uh, activities or any other uh, state now this embedded devices uh, basically, it is a quite a diverse uh, technology to handle and because of a different operating system, different file system and storage mechanism and then the communication mechanisms. And this may include uh, the GPS, PDS, cell phones and uh, there is an issue of centralized storage. That is, the storage is no more on the end devices and it is centralized. So these are the challenges uh, with the embedded devices forensic. Now this e-discovery -dis is the legal discovery of electronic evidences uh, using digital forensic. So basically the focus is on the legal discovery of any evidences. So the challenges are that uh, there are vast quantity of electronic storage information 
and sometimes an organization has inappropriate data retention policies that you store the data for longer period and this uh, actually if any incidents happened then you are compelled uh, to produce uh, these data so if you are storing data for since 10 years then you are legally bound to produce this data of 10 year if any incidents happened so you have to optimize your data retention policies i suppose this was all from my side uh please stay connected to my channel for similar uh, videos thank you